think of a sporting Mazda and you inevitably think of the ultra successful MX-5 Roadster. But delve deeper and you'll discover a braver and less conventional past. A past defined by Mazda's fascination with the rotary engine and a catalogue of pioneering motorsport achievements. The most famous of these was Mazda's history-making victory in the 1991 Le Mans 24 Hours with the legendary 787B Group C car. But there's another Mazda 24 hour winner, one that defeated far more powerful opposition to win the 1981 Spa 24 hour race. This wonderfully original RX7 in fact. So turn up your speakers and come with us as we get to know this cracking little car and experience the uniquely manic performance of Mazda's other rotary powered icon. Now the heart of the RX7 story is its rotary engine and it really is quite a bizarre experience. I've never driven a two-stroke motorbike but it's very similar from what I've been told and from what I know of two-stroke bikes. It's more about revs and a minute power band and that's exactly what this car is. The owner told me well, normally with old racing cars, it's all about keeping the revs down. With this car, the owner's saying you best keep it above 6,000, and really nothing happens much below 7. And yeah, it's fine to rev it to 8.5. But that, that's the world of the rotary engine. It's, you basically multiply everything by 2, so in conventional capacity terms, this car is less than 1200 cc's but for equivalency factor in motorsport it was rated at 2.3 litres <laughs> at Spa in 81 this car wasn't in the top class wasn't in the biggest capacity class so, but it found itself racing overall against 3 litre Capris 3 litre 5 series BMWs and 5.7 litre Chevy Camaros which kind of blows my mind really especially when you consider that not only did this car qualify on the front row of the grid but it went on to win the race convincingly and what's it like to drive? well it's, it's a manic little thing as you can probably hear from the engine it's quite a physical car actually, there's no power steering, there's no servo assistance on the brakes. So although the car weighs just about 900 kilos ringing off, it's a much, got a much bigger feel to it and you need a certain amount of heft to hustle it around. Using engine tuning knowledge of the day, they still managed to more than double the power output of the regular road car. So this car has 225 horsepower, but that arrives at around 8,000 RPM. So you've really got nothing much, and then everything compressed into 1,000 RPM or so. But listen to it. <laughs> What a hilarious machine. The balance of the car is beautiful. That engine is so far back in the chassis and so low and so light. It's, it's just so wonderfully balanced. You feel the front end push, you back off, you get back on the power and the rear end slides a little bit, but it's all in small amounts. <laughs> you can hear it pop and bang and then it sort of tests a little bit until you get right up it and then it just flies from seven to eight and a half. Back in the day they would be revving it to nine by deference to the car's age and its owner. We're not quite working it that hard but still. A brilliant little car. I mean, 
this is a, we shouldn't forget what a significant part of Mazda's motorsport history this is. It was the first Japanese car to win the Spa 24 hours and it really set Mazda on the way towards their most celebrated 24 hour victory, which as we all know, was at Le Mans with the fantastic 787B. But this little RX-7, it might look pretty much road standard, but it's an absolute giant slayer. What a wonderful thing. It's funny when you look at the car and it looks very close to standard in its appearance and you look at the sort of on paper performance so it's got 225 horsepower or something like that but it weighs 900 kilos and to give an indication we've used my Megane Trophy Renault Sport as a camera car which is a quick car by modern standards and it was really struggling to to keep pace with the Mazda when we wanted to do some tracking and I it's not that I didn't expect it to be a quick car, but I perhaps didn't expect it to, to stack up quite as well against a car that's 34, 35 years its junior. Some of the stuff that you, you only get with a rotary, or what I've learned you only get with a rotary, are the, the more sensory things that you, you get in a racing car. So there's different smells, obviously different sound, because it's screaming away and it sounds like a little wasp at low revs, and then it absolutely screams to, eight and a half thousand revs but they put two stroke oil in with the fuel so you get some it's almost like a motorcycle in in the way it delivers its performance and some of the some of the excitement you get from it it's really hot in there as well i think rotaries are notorious for the heat that comes off the the exhausts and you see so you're sweating you've got the fumes you can pretty much smell your boots melting to the floor of the thing it's quite a heavy steering and it's quite a physical little car to drive. So I think it would have been, again, much more demanding than perhaps you would imagine a car of that size and, and power to be. So testament to Tom Walkinshaw and Pierre Dudonnet for, for driving two drivers in a 24 hour race in that thing must have been quite an undertaking. 